very difficult to understand. You're talking about you know raw hex codes for opcodes, and if you want to change the algorithm being used, you have to rewrite the whole thing, which in practice didn't happen. So the new wonderful or so before they basically had their parser that parses the GLS all coming from the application, and this is you know uh, GPU independent, and it either goes to graphics card if it can, it went to a JIT compiler if it could, and then went to an interpreter. One other interesting thing about this is that because they're graphics people, not compiler people, their JIT wasn't able to actually implement all the the full generality of the language. If you use looping, for example, their JIT couldn't handle it. it only handled single basic blocks. And if you hit, did a lot of the more interesting, aggressive things, you would actually fall back to the interpreter. That's bad for performance. It's also bad because the interpreter had a completely different set of bugs in the JIT. Did the boss run all that? Yes, it's all online. So all the downloading sheets. Yeah, the the application literally uploads you a chunk of text. The first text you have to do all this stuff. And again, this is extremely performance sensitive in the sense that you're going to run millions of vertices with this, millions of pixels, billions of pixels, right? So the cost of doing this isn't actually that important in the grand scheme of things. So you know, when you're loading levels, that's when it's compiling this. So um, basically, the way this works in the new wonderful LVM way is that you know we have the existing OpenGL parser. They build their AST. They do their basic stuff. They convert to LVM. We run LVM optimizations, and we run the JIT. Wow, that's simple. Okay. Um, so this gave them immediately support for RBC 64 and XA664 as soon as Evan and I implemented those targets. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, of course, there were no bugs ever. Then told me there were no bugs. There you go. And uh, well, so the thing that, that they were interested with is that this basically gives them code that's exactly what they would get as if they wrote all the stuff in C and sent it through a static compiler, right? Because they have the same code generators, the same optimizations. They should be getting the same code. This means they're, they are getting register allocation, they're getting scheduling, they're getting all the stuff. They have the code generator cranked up to the maximum code quality setting, you can expense the, at the expense of compile time because if you can get you know, a couple extra cycles out of this loop that you're going to be executing millions of times, they're happy. <laughs> so this is all very conventional, but the question is, is how does this work? And so you know, a traditional way of doing this is that you have your AST, you walk your AST, and for every operation, you spit out a little, you know, well, I know that a dot product is a multiply, and a multiply, and a multiply, and a multiply, and add, 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 right? This is how the C front end works. And this is great for the C front end because each AST node is very simple, right? But in the graphics land, doing a texture lookup might be hundreds of instructions. Encoding all this stuff into the front end, you know, the AST expander thing, is bad. It's hard to maintain. So before I get into actually how we implement this, I want to go back to how the interpreter works in OpenGL, right? So interpreters are very simple and they're very easy to understand. They're also very easy to debug. So in the interpreter, basically, you have your main dispatch loop where you're looping over all the operations in the program. In this case, you can walk over an AST. You do a switch on the different operations. So say a dot product, you call a function, or you can inline it, depending on what you want to do. But say you call a function, you pass the argument you want. And then in the case of OpenGL, they hand vectorize the implementation of this. And so using um, SSC or Altebec intrinsics now, they have very tight locally optimal code for doing a dot program. So this is, the nice thing about this is that this is very high level. It's easy to maintain. If you want to port, port to a new architecture, you use another LF something or else, right? LF Spark. And now we can support our Mac Sparks. Um, and the generic C code is always there. So in a debugger, you can actually step through this stuff and you know see everything how it works. Well, we didn't want to give all this stuff up when we went to a JIT. Right? You know, the LVM JIT is going to be fully general, capable of JITing any, any functions coming through the pipeline. We're not going to give up if you have looping. <laughs> and so that means the interpreter goes away, right? Well, the interesting thing 